George Kingston was the quintessential success story. In his early 40s, he had built a stellar career as a real estate agent, specializing in high-end properties that catered to the elite of the city. His reputation as a shrewd negotiator and visionary in the real estate market had earned him a clientele that was both prestigious and loyal. He owned several luxury condos downtown, a testament to his hard work and a symbol of his status in the community. George had the kind of life many envied. His home, a sprawling estate in an upscale suburban neighborhood, was a masterpiece of architecture and design, boasting meticulously landscaped gardens and an interior that blended classic elegance with modern comforts. The house was not just a home but a sanctuary that he shared with his wife, Natalie. Natalie Kingston was everything one could hope for in a partner, beautiful, intelligent, and accomplished in her own right. As a marketing executive at a prominent firm, she was known for her strategic mind and her ability to charm clients with ease. Natalie and George were a power couple, often seen at charity galas and community events, exuding an aura of sophistication and success that others admired. Their lives seemed idyllic on the surface. They enjoyed weekends in the Hamptons, dinner parties with influential friends, and spontaneous trips to Paris or Rome. Their home was filled with laughter and the promise of a future as bright as their present. To their neighbors and friends, they were the embodiment of happiness and prosperity. However, beneath the polished veneer, George began to notice subtle changes in Natalie. In the months leading up to the incident, there were signs that something was amiss, though at first, they were easy to overlook. Natalie had always been busy, but lately, her late nights at the office had become more frequent and her business trips more prolonged. George would sometimes find Natalie preoccupied with her phone, her brow furrowed in concentration as she typed away. When he asked her about it, she brushed it off as work-related stress. Just a few urgent projects, she would say with a reassuring smile, her eyes not quite meeting his. There were other changes, too. Natalie, once vivacious and full of life, seemed distracted, her mind elsewhere even when they were together. George noticed that her laughter, once genuine and spontaneous, now seemed forced. Their conversations, which had once flowed effortlessly, now felt stilted and awkward. George tried to dismiss his growing unease, attributing it to Natalie's demanding career. He knew how much pressure she was under, especially with a recent promotion that had increased her responsibilities. Yet, despite his efforts to rationalize her behavior, a nagging feeling lingered in the back of his mind, a whisper of doubt that refused to be silenced. Despite the changes at home, George's routine remained largely unchanged. His days were a whirlwind of meetings, property showings, and negotiations. He thrived on the adrenaline of closing deals, the satisfaction of matching clients with their dream homes, and the challenges that each new day brought. George was meticulous in his work, always striving for excellence. He prided himself on his ability to anticipate market trends and adapt his strategies accordingly. His clients trusted him implicitly, knowing that he would go above and beyond to meet their needs. Yet, for all his success, George's true joy came from his life with Natalie. Despite his busy schedule, he always made time for her. He would leave work early to cook her favorite meals, surprising her with candlelit dinners and her favorite wine. On weekends, he planned romantic getaways to rekindle the spark in their marriage, hoping to recapture the magic they had once shared. In those quiet moments at home, away from the demands of their respective careers, George cherished the simple pleasures of life with Natalie. Whether it was watching movies together, walking hand in hand through the neighborhood, or simply sitting in comfortable silence, he treasured the time they spent together. Despite the growing distance between them, George held onto the belief that their love was strong enough to weather any storm. He was determined to support Natalie, to help her navigate whatever challenges she faced, just as she had supported him throughout his career. He refused to let doubt cloud his trust in her, choosing instead to focus on the life they had built together and the future they had yet to create. However, as the weeks passed, George's unease grew harder to ignore. He noticed small things that added to his suspicions, Natalie's sudden reluctance to discuss her day, the way she would avoid his gaze when he asked about her late nights, and the new clothes and jewelry that appeared without explanation. George's instincts honed by years of reading clients and closing deals, told him something was wrong. Yet, 
He hesitated to confront Natalie, fearing that doing so might irreparably damage their relationship. Instead, he resolved to give her the benefit of the doubt, hoping that his fears were unfounded and that the woman he loved was still the person he believed her to be. Even as he clung to this hope, George couldn't shake the feeling that his perfect life was unraveling. The signs of trouble were becoming too numerous to ignore, and the growing chasm between him and Natalie threatened to swallow everything he held dear. In the calm before the storm, George found himself reflecting on their life together, the moments of joy and laughter, the challenges they had overcome, and the dreams they had yet to fulfill. He longed to recapture the magic that had once defined their relationship, to find a way back to the happiness they had shared. It was a Saturday morning when George Kingston decided to finally address the leaky pipe in the basement, a task that had been nagging at him for weeks. Natalie had told him she would be away for the weekend at a marketing conference. The house was unusually quiet without her presence, and George welcomed the solitude as an opportunity to focus on the overdue home maintenance. He gathered his tools and made his way down to the basement, a dimly lit space that smelled faintly of damp concrete and old paint. The basement was a storage area, cluttered with boxes of seasonal decorations, old furniture, and forgotten relics of their life together. As he descended the creaky wooden steps, the sound of dripping water grew louder, reminding him of his purpose. George set to work, kneeling on the cold floor as he examined the faulty pipe. He enjoyed the straightforward nature of fixing things, there was a clear problem and a logical solution unlike the complexities he was beginning to sense in his personal life. For a moment, he lost himself in the rhythmic process of tightening bolts and sealing joints, finding a semblance of peace in the task at hand. As George worked, the sound of voices drifted down from the floor above. At first, he thought nothing of it. Perhaps Natalie had left the television on before she departed. He continued working, the voices a distant hum in the background. But as the conversation grew clearer, he paused, realizing that one of the voices belonged to Natalie. His heart skipped a beat as he strained to hear. Natalie's voice was playful, her laughter light and intimate, unlike the strained tone he had grown accustomed to in recent months. But it was the other voice, a man's voice, that sent a jolt of unease through him. The tone was unfamiliar, deep and self-assured. Don't worry, sweetie, the man said his voice carrying a confident drawl that grated against George's nerves. While you're at work, I'll take care of everything. The house will burn down with your cuckled husband inside, and you'll get the insurance money. Then we can sell everything off. George's breath caught in his throat. The wrench slipped from his grasp, clattering to the floor as the full weight of the words hit him. His mind raced, his heart pounding in his chest as if trying to escape the horror unfolding around him. Natalie's response was like a knife twisting in his gut. No one will suspect us, she replied, her voice tinged with a smile. I can't wait for it to happen. For a moment, George felt as if he were floating outside his own body, disconnected from reality. The basement, once a place of mundane chores and quiet reflection, now seemed like a trap, suffocating and oppressive. His mind struggled to process the betrayal, the cold, calculated plans spoken so casually above him. The woman he had loved and trusted, the woman he had shared his life with, was conspiring with another man to kill him. The realization was a tidal wave of pain and anger, crashing over him and threatening to pull him under. His thoughts raced in a chaotic spiral, Natalie's recent behavior, the late nights, the distant looks, all fell into place with a sickening clarity. But beneath the shock and hurt, a fierce resolve began to take root. George was not a man who would accept defeat easily. His success in the real estate world had been built on resilience and adaptability, traits that would now serve him in this personal crisis. He knew he had to act quickly and carefully. The shock of betrayal would have to wait. Survival was his immediate priority. Natalie and her lover had underestimated him, dismissing him as a mere obstacle to their happiness. But George was determined to prove them wrong, to turn their own plot against them. George picked up the wrench, gripping it tightly as he listened to the footsteps above move away. The casual ease with which they plotted his demise fueled his resolve. He wouldn't let them take everything from him without a fight. Emerging from the basement, George moved quietly through the house, his senses heightened and alert. 
He needed to think, to plan his next steps with precision. He couldn't afford any mistakes, not when his life was on the line. George knew he had to gather evidence, something concrete that would expose Natalie and her lover's plans. He needed proof, something undeniable that would turn the tables and protect him from their treachery. His mind raced through the possibilities, weighing the risks and the potential outcomes. George decided to leave the house temporarily, under the guise of attending a business meeting. He wanted Natalie to believe that nothing had changed, that he was blissfully unaware of her betrayal. In reality, he planned to stay close, watching and waiting for the perfect moment to act. Over the next few days, George kept up the facade of normalcy, pretending to be the same unsuspecting husband he had always been. Natalie returned from her supposed conference, her demeanor unchanged. She was confident in her deception, unaware that George was one step ahead. As George gathered more evidence, his determination solidified into a plan. He would not only survive, but ensure that Natalie and her lover paid the price for their treachery. It was a dangerous game, but George was willing to risk everything to protect himself and exact justice. He continued to act as if nothing had changed, biding his time while he collected recordings and documents that would expose the plot. Every interaction with Natalie became a test of his resolve, each moment an opportunity to fortify his plan. The pain of betrayal was still there, a constant presence that he had to push aside to focus on the task at hand. But George channeled that pain into action, using it as fuel for the fire that burned within him. George knew that confronting Natalie directly would be dangerous. He needed irrefutable evidence and a foolproof strategy to ensure his safety and achieve the justice he sought. The stakes were high, but he was prepared to do whatever it took. George Kingston stood in the dim light of the basement, his heart pounding in his chest as he listened to the sinister conversation between his wife, Natalie, and her lover, Derek. Every word felt like a dagger, but George forced himself to remain calm, aware that the slightest noise could give away his presence. As the conversation unfolded, he carefully retrieved his phone, setting it to record. The device captured their voices, each incriminating word etched into the digital memory, a crucial piece of evidence in what had become a fight for his life. His hands shook slightly as he held the phone, ensuring it was positioned to capture the conversation clearly. Natalie's voice was familiar yet chillingly cold, filled with a casual malice that he had never imagined possible. Derek's voice, confident and assured, echoed alongside hers, weaving a narrative of betrayal and greed that sent a shiver down George's spine. Once he was certain he had captured enough evidence, George carefully stopped the recording and slipped the phone back into his pocket. With every step, he made sure to avoid the creaky floorboards, moving like a shadow as he exited the basement. His mind was racing, yet his movements were deliberate, fueled by a clarity of purpose he hadn't felt before. He had to act swiftly, ensuring that Natalie and Derek remained unaware of his knowledge until the right moment. As soon as he was out of the house, George drove to a nearby hotel, maintaining the pretense of a business trip. He checked in under the guise of a late-night arrival, his demeanor calm and composed despite the turmoil within. Once in the privacy of his room, George allowed himself a moment to process the gravity of the situation. The betrayal cut deep, but George knew that acting out of anger or desperation would only jeopardize his chances of survival. He had to be strategic calculating each move with precision. As he reviewed the recording on his phone, he felt a sense of grim satisfaction. The evidence was undeniable, a testament to the deceit and malice that had infiltrated his life. George considered going to the police, but he quickly dismissed the idea. There was no guarantee they would act swiftly enough to prevent the planned arson, and he couldn't risk leaving his fate in the hands of a system that might fail him. Besides, a part of him craved justice on his own terms a retribution that would ensure Natalie and Derek paid for their betrayal. With a sense of determination, George began to formulate a plan. He mapped out each step with meticulous care, considering every possible outcome and contingency. He knew he needed to turn the tables on Natalie and Derek to outsmart them at their own game. This was no longer just about survival. It was about reclaiming control over his life. To execute his plan, George needed allies he could trust. He reached out to an old friend, Jack Thompson, a private investigator with a reputation for discretion and resourcefulness. 
George and Jack had worked together in the past, their friendship forged through mutual respect and shared experiences. George explained the situation to Jack, laying out the details of the betrayal and the evidence he had gathered. Jack listened intently, his expression a mix of disbelief and determination. I'll help you, George, Jack said, his voice steady. We'll make sure they get what's coming to them. Together, they began to craft a narrative that would lead Natalie and Derek to believe they were executing their plan flawlessly. George knew he had to maintain the illusion of ignorance, to act as though he were blissfully unaware of their intentions. It was a delicate dance, requiring patience and precision, but George was determined to see it through. Jack set up surveillance equipment in the house, cameras, and microphones hidden in strategic locations to capture every move and conversation. They coordinated their efforts, ensuring that each step was accounted for, every detail meticulously planned. The trap was set, but George knew he couldn't afford to become complacent. He continued to play his role, interacting with Natalie as though nothing had changed, all the while documenting their interactions and gathering additional evidence. It was a psychological battle, one that tested his resolve and resilience, but George remained steadfast, driven by a desire for justice and closure. As the days passed, George found himself navigating a web of deception, each interaction with Natalie a reminder of the betrayal that had shattered their lives. He watched her closely, noting every nuance in her behavior, every flicker of doubt or hesitation that might indicate awareness of his plan. Natalie, for her part, seemed confident in her deception. She continued her routine, her demeanor unchanged, unaware that George was one step ahead. Her phone calls with Derek were monitored, each conversation analyzed for clues or inconsistencies. George and Jack worked tirelessly, piecing together the puzzle that would ultimately expose the plot. George found solace in the precision of his plan, the knowledge that he was reclaiming control over his life. He honed his instincts, drawing on his experience in real estate negotiations, where reading people and anticipating their moves had been key to his success. In the calm before the storm, George took a moment to reflect on the journey that had brought him here. The betrayal had been a catalyst, a turning point that had forced him to reevaluate his life and his priorities. He had been tested in ways he had never imagined, pushed to the brink of despair. Yet he had emerged stronger, more resilient. As he looked ahead, George felt a renewed sense of purpose. He had been given a second chance, an opportunity to rewrite the narrative of his life. The path would not be easy, but he was determined to forge ahead, to create a future that was defined not by betrayal, but by justice and redemption. With the trap set and the evidence in place, George and Jack made their final preparations. They reviewed their plan, ensuring that every detail was accounted for, every contingency addressed. The confrontation was imminent, but George felt a sense of calm amidst the chaos, a certainty that justice would prevail. He steeled himself for the challenges ahead, aware that the path to resolution would be fraught with danger and uncertainty. But he was ready, fortified by the knowledge that he had done everything in his power to protect himself and reclaim his life. And as he prepared to face Natalie and Derek, George knew that he would not rest until justice was served, until the truth was revealed and the betrayal that had threatened to destroy him was finally laid to rest. George Kingston awoke on the day of his supposed business trip with a mix of anticipation and dread. This was the moment he had been planning for, a carefully orchestrated departure that would set the stage for his ultimate revenge. After showering and dressing, he walked into the bedroom where Natalie was already sipping her morning coffee, her eyes scanning the screen of her phone. Good morning, he greeted her with a feigned casualness that masked the intensity boiling beneath the surface. Good morning, honey she replied, barely looking up. Big day today? Yeah, George nodded, maintaining his facade. I have to fly out for that big real estate deal I told you about. It's going to be a couple of days. Natalie gave him a distracted smile, the kind that didn't reach her eyes. Good luck, she said, her tone neutral. George packed his bags with deliberate slowness, making sure Natalie saw every step as he placed his laptop, documents, and clothes into the suitcase. He checked his phone one last time, pretending to confirm his flight details, and then zipped up his bag with a decisive flourish. Off I go, George announced, standing at the door with his luggage. 
He leaned in to kiss Natalie on the cheek, a gesture that felt more like an obligatory ritual than a genuine act of affection. She smiled back, perhaps already mentally checking off the first step of their dark plan. Safe travels, she said, watching him walk out the door. George's heart raced as he drove away from the house, every nerve on edge as he executed the first part of his deception. Instead of heading to the airport, he drove to a small, discreet hotel on the outskirts of town where his private investigator, Jack Thompson, awaited. From the hotel, George and Jack set up their makeshift command center. They monitored the live feed from the surveillance equipment they had installed throughout the house. Cameras and microphones captured every inch of the living room, kitchen, and even the bedrooms, ensuring that no corner of the house was hidden from their view. The tension in the hotel room was palpable as they watched the live feed. George's eyes were glued to the screen, where Natalie appeared in the kitchen, preparing a light lunch as though it were any other day. Shortly after, Derek arrived, his presence in George's home a stark reminder of the betrayal that had brought them to this point. Jack, experienced in surveillance, watched with a professional detachment, but George felt each moment as a visceral blow. Derek and Natalie were relaxed, exchanging playful banter and stolen kisses as they made plans for the evening. They were completely unaware that every word, every glance was being documented, their fate sealed by their own hubris. I can't believe they're so confident, George muttered, his voice a mix of disbelief and anger. Jack nodded, his eyes fixed on the screen. Arrogance is often their downfall, he replied. The hours crept by as they watched, every tick of the clock bringing them closer to the night's deadly climax. Natalie and Derek went about their preparations with an unsettling calm, their movements deliberate as they gathered the materials needed for the fire they intended to start. Night fell, casting a shadow over the house that seemed to mirror the darkness of their intentions. George sat in the hotel room, a knot of tension coiled tightly in his stomach. He knew that tonight would be the culmination of everything he had worked towards, the point of no return. Are you ready? Jack asked, glancing over at George. George nodded, steeling himself for what was to come. Yeah, let's do this. They watched as Natalie and Derek moved through the house, setting the stage for their arson attempt. Natalie's demeanor was calm, her actions methodical as she placed accelerants in strategic locations, unaware that each step was being captured in high-definition clarity. Derek, meanwhile, fiddled with a lighter, his confidence a stark contrast to the dread building in George's chest. George and Jack had already alerted the authorities, coordinating with them to ensure they would arrive at the precise moment to catch Natalie and Derek in the act. The plan was simple. Let them begin their operation and then intervene before any real damage could be done. As Derek prepared to ignite the accelerant, George knew it was time to act. With Jack at his side, they drove to the house, their hearts pounding in unison with the roar of the engine. They pulled up to the driveway just as Derek flicked the lighter open, its flame dancing precariously close to the accelerant-soaked materials. George burst through the front door, his presence like a thunderclap that shattered the tense silence. Stop, he shouted, his voice echoing through the house. Natalie's head whipped around, her face draining of color as she realized she had been caught. Derek froze, the lighter falling from his hand as he stared at George, eyes wide with shock. You really thought you could get away with this? George continued, holding up his phone, the screen displaying the live feed from their surveillance setup. Every word, every plan, recorded. Natalie's composure crumbled, her eyes darting between George and Derek as if searching for an escape. George, I, don't say shit to me, bitch. George cut her off, his voice cold and unyielding. You are going to kill me, Natalie. You and your little fucker here. Derek stepped forward, attempting to muster a defense, but the sound of sirens cut him off. The police arrived, their lights flashing, painting the house in shades of red and blue. Officers flooded the room taking in the scene with practiced efficiency. George Kingston? One of the officers asked, approaching him. George nodded, handing over the phone with the recordings. It's all here. Attempted arson, conspiracy to commit murder. Natalie and Derek were handcuffed, their faces masks of disbelief and despair as they were led out of the house. George watched them go, 
a strange mix of triumph and sorrow settling in his chest. The people he had once trusted had plotted to destroy him, but now they faced the consequences of their actions. As the police wrapped up their investigation, George remained in the living room, the weight of the night settling over him. The house, once filled with memories of love and happiness, now felt like a stranger's, its walls echoing with betrayal. Jack joined him, offering a supportive pat on the back. You did it, George. It's over. George nodded, his gaze distant as he processed the night's events. He had survived the storm, but the path ahead remained uncertain. The betrayal had left scars, wounds that would take time to heal. Thanks, Jack, George said, his voice heavy with exhaustion. I couldn't have done it without you. Jack smiled, a warm gesture of camaraderie and support. Anytime, my friend. Now you can start rebuilding. George took a deep breath, feeling the weight of his decision lift slightly. The future was unknown, but it was his to shape. As he stood in the house that had been both his sanctuary and his prison, he resolved to move forward, to find solace in the knowledge that justice had been served. With a final glance around the room, George stepped outside, the cool night air a bomb against the tumultuous emotions swirling within. The journey ahead would be challenging, but he was ready to face it, armed with the lessons learned and the resilience forged in the crucible of betrayal. The courtroom buzzed with murmurs of disbelief as the verdict was read aloud. Natalie Kingston and Derek Harrington were found guilty on multiple charges, including attempted murder and conspiracy to commit arson. The evidence against them was overwhelming. The recordings George had gathered played a pivotal role in unraveling their plot. Each playback of their cold, calculating voices sent ripples of shock through the courtroom, leaving no doubt about their intentions. George sat in the gallery, feeling a mix of relief and exhaustion as the judge pronounced the sentence. Natalie and Derek were led away in handcuffs, their faces masks of disbelief and defeat. The betrayal that had once threatened to destroy him was now laid bare, its architects facing the consequences of their actions. The gavel's final bang echoed like a closure, a punctuation mark at the end of a chapter filled with deceit and treachery. The community, once captivated by the illusion of a perfect marriage, rallied around George. Neighbors who had watched him leave for work each day and return each night now offered their support, shocked by the dark undercurrents that had flowed beneath the surface. The betrayal was a rupture in the fabric of their small, close-knit society but George's resilience shone through like a beacon. Friends and acquaintances approached him with words of admiration and encouragement. They marveled at his strength and cunning, his ability to navigate the storm with a level head. The betrayal that could have shattered him instead became a testament to his tenacity. In the days that followed, George became something of a local hero, a symbol of overcoming adversity. He was invited to community gatherings, where people expressed their support and shared stories of how his ordeal had inspired them. Though he appreciated the recognition, George remained humble, acknowledging that the path to justice had been a collective effort. With the trial behind him, George turned his attention to the future. The insurance money, initially intended to be part of Natalie and Derek's nefarious plan, was now rightfully his. Additionally, the assets he and Natalie had shared were liquidated, providing him with a substantial financial cushion. Selling the house, once a symbol of their life together, was a bittersweet decision. The walls that had witnessed moments of love and betrayal now felt tainted, a constant reminder of what had transpired. George knew that moving forward meant leaving behind the shadows of his past. He found a buyer quickly, someone eager to make new memories in a place he was ready to leave behind. With the proceeds, George invested in a new life, choosing a home that symbolized his fresh start, a modern apartment in a vibrant part of the city, surrounded by energy and possibility. As he settled into his new life, George discovered a deeper purpose. The ordeal he had endured had opened his eyes to the plight of others facing similar betrayals. He realized that his story could be a source of strength and encouragement for those who felt trapped or helpless. Drawing on his wealth and experience, George became an advocate for those wronged by betrayal. He volunteered with support groups and legal aid organizations, offering guidance and resources to individuals navigating their own battles. His story resonated with many, a testament to the power of resilience and the possibility of redemption. 
George's journey took him to speaking engagements, where he shared his story with audiences eager to hear how he had transformed his pain into empowerment. He spoke with honesty and vulnerability, recounting the darkest moments of his life and the path to healing. His words inspired others to find their own strength, to reclaim their narratives, and chart new courses. In time, George became a sought-after speaker, his message of hope and resilience touching hearts and minds across the country. He wrote a book detailing his journey, a memoir that chronicled the events that had shaped him and the lessons he had learned. The book became a bestseller, further cementing his role as a beacon of hope for those facing adversity. Through it all, George remained grounded, his focus on helping others find their own paths to healing. He understood that betrayal was a universal experience, one that transcended backgrounds and circumstances. By sharing his story, he hoped to create a ripple effect, inspiring others to rise above their challenges and embrace their own potential. In the end, justice had been served, not just in the courtroom but in the life George had built for himself. He had turned the page on a painful chapter, embracing a future defined not by betrayal, but by hope, empowerment, and the promise of new beginnings.